back to my channel. Welcome to today's car boot haul video. Two car boots this morning, Easter Compton and Trench Lane. It's been a funny weekend here. It's been very, very showery. And when I arrived at Easter Compton this morning, it was a nice day. I arrived at Easter Compton, that was a bit on the small side. And I thought, oh, everybody will be at Trench. Because quite often the sellers that would be at Easter Compton in poor weather go to Trench in good weather. However, when we got to Trench, that was also small. So essentially people just aren't doing car boots this weekend. Did, however, get some stuff as always. So let's show you. First off, I got two of the Ikea Rosalie pink flowered boxes. Little bit grubby, but nothing too bad. Both zips in good condition, pound each for those. The lady was unpacking her car as we got there and I said, and she had DVDs and videos and things in these. And I said to her, are you selling the boxes? Cause sometimes people aren't. Sometimes people intend to take the boxes home again. They're just using them for the car boot. And she said, oh, I don't know yet. And I said, okay. When do you think you'll know? And she said, well, maybe when the stuff's gone, I might sell them. And I was like, right, okay. So I wandered around and did the car boots. And when I went back, I thought, I'll just ask her one more time before I go home. And I said, have you given it any more thought? And she said, oh yeah, you can have them if you want for a pound each. So I got two of those for a pound each. Very pleased with those. I'm not sure how many I now have. Hold the line. I have another two, but if I remember rightly, the other two were the grubby ones that aren't in the greatest of condition. So may not list them all together. Unfortunately, those covers aren't removable. Despite the fact that they zip on and off to be used, they are stitched onto the actual unit. So you can't remove the covers to wash them, which is a shame. But yeah, there are two of those for a quid each. Please with those. This is my filler bag and there's not a lot in it. I picked up some of these file folders, plainly not to resell. These are for my own personal use. At some point, I am going to get my paperwork into some semblance of order. So I chucked those in. They look they look pretty much unused, most of those. So yeah, chucked those in. And an anagrams game, which I had not seen before. I don't think it's particularly vintage. It's got a barcode on it, so it's not that vintage. But I hadn't seen it before, so I put that in. A roll of, um, we use this as transfer paper for for making things with the cricket, but you can also use it for covering books. Just, you know, sticky back plastic, fablon kind of stuff. Roll of that. That's expensive when you buy it, so it's nice to find that in filler bag. A paper chase style filofax, paper chase filofax style organiser. Surprisingly, it's not just filofax, there's ones that sell this, these paper chase ones. I've done quite well with these before as well. So I threw that in. Two spatulas for the kitchen. They are brand new, they haven't been used, and ours have gone a bit weird, they've gone a bit yellow. If you use them for stirring anything that's got turmeric or anything like that, they don't necessarily come clean, so I chucked those into my filler bag. A book for my mother, Below Stairs, kind of thing she likes. I've read that one, she will enjoy that one, because I've read it, but I, have, I had it on my Kindle. And I tried taking my mother a Kindle over, because I had my old Kindle, I thought, but... She can't get to grips with it. She doesn't like the idea of the technology in the first place, so she doesn't really put her head into getting to grips with it. So, stick to paper books. Little bag of curtain rings. And then a set of four vintage shell napkin rings. These are conch shells, aren't they, I think? If I'm mistaken about the type of shell, please feel free to tell me, but I think it's I think it's conch shell. So set up four of them. I'm not going to throw them back in the bag. I'm amazed they've made it back unchipped as it is. And then a set of wooden carved coasters, just vintage coasters, no idea of the age, but there's one, two, three, four, seven in the in the box. Maybe there would have been eight originally. I'm not sure. Hang on. I think there probably would have been room for another one. If you look at how much room there is in the top there, there's probably space for another one, but there were only seven in the bag and they're just carved, just carved wooden coasters in a little wooden holder. That was my filler bag. There's not a great deal in it, but it cost me nothing today. My filler bag was free. And I'll tell you for why. I bought from Steve, the car boot guy does the filler bag, this lot. These are all audiobooks. So there's a lot of Ian Rankin in here. Now I've dropped them twice out of the car, which means some of them come out of their cases and some of the cases are now not in good condition, which is annoying. They fell out of the car twice and spilled out everywhere. But there's a lot of Ian Rankin and um, a few other things. There's Judy Dench's autobiography there, which I might listen to in the car because I do like a bit of Dame Judy. Um, there's Geoffrey Archer. don't know if he's still got a fan base. Sherlock Holmes collection starring Basil Rathbone. Not sure if that's on cassette or no, it's, it's discs. 
American Blood by Ben Sanders. Some Orion Rankin. There's loads in there. Basically, there's 27 in total. Most of them are crime mysteries. Um, so they're, they're not. The, there's a couple of Poirot, which I'll listen to in the car, but more modern crime. Not really my thing, because I don't like all the blood and gore. Um, there's the Da Vinci Code in there, which is something I've never read. So audiobooks um, generally sell for me for anywhere between five and ten pounds, depending on what they are, how new they are, you know, the genre. So. Steve had 27 and I, I said, first said to him, how much do you want on those each? And he went, oh, I don't know, two or three quid each. And I went, oh, okay. And I was looking through and picking out which ones I thought I might possibly want for myself. Because at two or three quid each, there wasn't a lot of resale value in there. And uh, then he came over and he said, um, and I said to him, how much would you ask if, if I wanted these ones? And I had like a little handful like that in my hand. And he went, oh, I don't know, let's have a look. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, Steve, give me a ballpark figure for the lot. And we'll take it from there. So he counted them all up and he said, oh, there's 27 there. And he said to me, how fast will you get rid of them? I said, I don't know, because some of them might hang around for a long time. Some of them might go quickly. I, you know, it's, it is a very much a shot in the dark on some of them. And he went, oh, do you know, it can be 15 quid for the lot. So I said, 15 quid is lovely. And then I went to pay him. And I said, oh, and I've got my filler bag here as well. And he went, just give me 15 quid all in. So thank you very much for that, Steve. Much appreciated. There's Alan Titchmarsh there. I quite like Alan Titchmarsh's books. Much appreciated for the deal on that. And uh, all I need to do is find which ones have fallen out of their cases when they fell out the car and get them back into their right cases and make sure that they're all there. Because it, in fairness, he did say, he said, I don't know if they've all got all their discs, to be fair. And I said, that's OK, I'll take my chances. At that price, I will take my chances. So 15 quid, 27 audiobooks. A couple of them I will listen to myself, which puts the value into them straight away for me I'm like you know anything like anything that I listen to myself if I sell it on afterwards that's a like a double win I don't know where the case is for this Poirot one I'll find it in a minute I've got two Poirot discs here and no case for them but I know it's there somewhere as I was saying 15 quid for 27 if I listen to three of them and and, and tell myself they would have cost me five or each, then at any I sell I can get clear profit from that point on but definitely 27 even if I sold them all at five or each 135 pound that would be return on my 15 quid and some of them hopefully will go for more than a fiver so that was a good investment especially since he then chucked my filler bag in for nothing so everything in filler bag has cost me note this is the first thing i bought when i arrived at the book sale this morning and i was very glad the lady had some bubble wrap it is a set of three alice in wonderland Wittard cereal bowls so i've got the white rabbit all around the side it says, oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late, I shall be late. I'm late, I'm late, for a very important date. There's the Mad Hatter. And around the side of that it says, always tea, it's always tea time. And then there's Alice. And around the side of Alice it says, twinkle, twinkle at Mad Tea Party. However, Alice has a slight chip here. All of the others, perfectly good condition. She wanted £10 for the three. She said to me, oh, I've looked them up on eBay and they go for £10 each, so I want £10 for the three. And I kind of... I find it off-putting when people tell me what they've seen it for on eBay. But people who aren't resellers who check eBay prices quite often look at what things are going for, not what they have gone for. So they look at what people have listed it for, and that's sometimes a bit hopeful on the listing prices. I always look at the sold and completed, and then you know what people are actually willing to pay. But she wanted £10 for the three on those, and then she had she wanted a pound for these, which is a set of two um, funny face cups and saucers. And I ended up giving her £10 for the lot, so she she chucked the cups and saucers in for nothing in the end. So that's fine. That's that's a good deal for me. She was happy with the price she got. I'm happy with the bowls. It's a shame about Alice having a chip. I didn't know that when I bought them. But maybe I've chipped them on the way home. To be fair, it's possible that I've chipped them on the way back. And then, last couple of bits from Easter Compton, I got a, I think this is the Puppet Company. No, oh, Dot the Eye International, apparently, not the Puppet Company. It's like a, a knitted sock style puppet. I've had these before. I have. And that was 50p. No, it wasn't. That was a pound, I tell lies. 
This was 50p. It is a little paper chase pocket organizer. It's not paper chase, it's a file of facts. Pocket organizer, it's a Metropole in teal blue. These are the things I like most that I bought today. I don't know if they are, if they have a resell or whatever. I've had a very quick Google and couldn't find anything. So they are stained glass mirror panels in Rennie Macintosh style. And there are a set of three. I'm going to stand them there and hope they don't fall over. One, two, and three. I'm particularly astonished that I even got them home in one place. They say on the back, designed and handcrafted in Hamilton by Alex Palmer, and then there's a phone number. I do not know if they are vintage or modern, because it's not that easy to tell with stained glass, is it? Let's face it. But yeah, stained glass mirrored panels, Rennie Macintosh design, Rennie Macintosh copy or whatever. Managed to get them home in one piece, proud of that. Well, three pieces, as you can see. But I don't know about the value. I also don't think that I will enjoy trying to post them, which is a little bit of a shame. I think when it comes to posting those, I will be full of regrets for my purchase. <laughs> right, I'll leave those there. I think they're safer there than if I try and put them anywhere else. I'm going to get the other stuff out from the other car boot. Hold the line, caller. I'm back. Okay, so this lot is my second lot, and this is from the Trench Lane car boot sale. It's been a bit of a muggy day. I don't know if you can see that collection there. Let me show you this first. I've just posted on Instagram to see if anybody on there knows about this. My very limited knowledge of vintage ceramics suggests West German pottery. I'm hoping somebody will come and go, oh, that's so-and-so, because I, I don't know. On the bottom, it says 3127B. I don't know if you can make that out. 3127B, that's all it says. It doesn't say West Germany or or USSR, you know, anything. It doesn't, there's no, nothing apart from that. But it just, something about it is, is it that lava? What is it called, lava? I, think it's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It was two pounds and I bought it because I was like, well, I don't know. So yeah, I've just put it on Instagram. I'm hoping that some, some clever person on Instagram, oh no, that's so-and-so, yeah, that's what that is. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Lex. Lex has posted, yep, that's definitely ours, you're welcome. Cheers, Lex. Couldn't do it without you, Bab. Couldn't do it without you. <laughs> Hopefully somebody will have a little bit more info than Lex. Okay, I paid one pound for this Spiral Direct kind of goth wear, alternative wear. Spiral Direct do all kinds of tattoo design clothing. So that was a pound. And then I paid two pounds for this Jane Norman satin look tuxedo style jacket. It's got a little peplum, little peplum flare at the back there. Two pounds for that and some and some nice Y2K shoulder pads going on in there. This lady, I said, asked the lady how much did she want for these two? And she said three pounds. And I said, well, she'd take two. And she said, yes. And then as I was about to give her the two, I spotted this and she wanted three for this. So five pounds for the three items. I've got a Cap Kidston satchel bag. Nice condition. Not any real patches of grubbiness. No stains or marks as far as I can tell. Long strap. Nice, reasonably nice condition inside. What's that? little bit of black plastic stuck inside it. I don't know what that was. No large wadges of cash in the pockets, but then, you know, when have I ever found large wadges of cash in the pockets of anything? But yeah, so that was three, basically, and the other items were a pound each. And the two one pound each, each item, this is for me, it is just a, it's a silicon baking tray, but it has a rigid rim, which is brilliant. I thought it was about time somebody thought of that because silicon bakeware is lovely, lovely and non-stick and very easy to clean. But when you try and pick it up out of the oven, it goes blur, blur, blur. So you have to put it onto a metal bake tray, bake tray anyway. So this negates that problem. So I thought that was quite clever. So that's for us. And then the other one pound item was Oliver Bonas, uh, salt and pepper shakers. And it is a cat. The cat is the pepper, I think. Let's check the other one. Yeah, and the other one is the salt. So it's a cat and he stands next to a plant. I, mean, I think he's I mean, if that's a male cat, he's probably spraying on that plant, isn't he? Let's face it. But I thought they were cute. The box is a little bit given away. The box needs a spot of glue to rejuvenate it. I'll have to get the glue going out. So yeah, quid for that. 
pleased with that. 50p each for these two. It's a hair dye, which I only bought for the conditioner because I'm not, I'm not going blonde anytime soon, funnily enough. So I bought that for the conditioner and a dog coat, which is probably buddy size. It's a bit girly, but it is fur lined and he does like a fur lined coat in the winter. I've got to stop buying dog coats. Well, what more to the point, I've got to have a clear out of all the ones we've got, I decide which ones are ready to go because they're on their last legs, work out which ones don't even fit because I bought them in the hopes they would fit and they don't. And uh, and yeah, have a bit of a sort through and donate a few. This one made me laugh. This was a pound and the lady said to me, well, I need a bit of a wipe over. It needs a wipe over with a blowtorch. It's absolutely minging. <laughs> it's filthy. But it is a genuine Disney dopey mug. That is dopey, isn't it? Yeah. From the Disney store, I think the mug itself is going to have to go through the dishwasher because some of that... Some of that muck has been on there a while. I'm scrubbing away with a wet wipe here and not really um, not really even getting through the top crust. But it did have 5p in it, so <laughs> tucked in. Dopey's attached, see, it's, it's probably Dopey's attached and he sits in there and tucked in underneath him was 5p. So that's gone into my found money jar. Um, for anyone who's wondering what on earth that's all about, any money that I find over the course of the year, it goes into a jar and at the end of the year I try and do something for charity of some description with it. Try and do a different thing every year, but... I don't know what this year's will be yet. However, this year's is looking pretty strong. I've done well for finding money this year. So yeah, he is minging. He is... Let me show you. The colour of this wet wipe now. Gross. <laughs> but yeah, she says to me, I might need a wipe over. I was like, more than a wipe over, love. You need bathing in bleach. But yeah, I mean, I'll put it through the, through the dishwasher anyway, having taken off the worst of it, because I don't even want this in my dishwasher the way it is now. Having taken off the worst of it, it can go in the dishwasher. And I think I'm going to have to detach Dopey, pop him through the washing machine and then pop him back in afterwards. But it was a pound. It was worth a pound. I have not seen one of those Dopey mugs with Dopey sitting on the handle before. I don't know if you, did you see that up close? So yeah, he, there's a China Dopey just perched there on the handle. And then there's a little plush one with a beanie bum that sits inside. So definitely worth the quid, even though that is now the world's most minging wet wipe. Yeah. It's been a very muggy day because I also got a little Kath Kidston mug for a pound and a Lowry Design Wren mug. I've never seen a Lowry Wren mug before. That was 50p. And six of these. These are Wedgwood Home Festivity mugs. And she wanted a fiver for the six. She wanted a fiver for the six and a pound for the Kath Kidston mug and she chucked in the Kath Kidston mug so I gave her a fiver all in. Let me have a look and see what these Wedgwood ones come up at. Oh my goodness, I mean I realise this is a list price, not a sold price, but somebody in uh, the States has got them listed at about 37 quid. It translates to 37 quid. Let's have a look at solds because that was only a selling, not a sold. Let's have a look at solds. There are none in solds, which hopefully means that they are hard to come by and I can sell them for many millions of pounds. Certainly if somebody's got one listed at, at equates to $37, what's that, 40 quid? That's a good sign. I've got six of them. None of them are chipped yet, although they've got to live with me for a while first. So that is good. They will go, I won't sell them as a set of six. They will go on one multiple listing with six available so that people can buy ones or twos to complete missing parts of their collection. And then the last item I bought was this. This was from the lady that I got the dopey mug from. She had, a, uh, she wanted five and she took three on it because it was filthy. I've cleaned this up already. It, like, I don't know where she was storing her stock, but it must have been in a garage or something, and it was absolutely filthy. So I've already cleaned this box up, and it is Paul Cardew, the designer. That's him in the corner there. And it is a lovely... ceramic teapot and cup and saucer set and it's the teddy bears picnic so on the teapot it says all around the top there today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic and on the handle as well picnic time for teddy bears the little teddy bears are having a lovely time today see them catch them on the way something like that anyway hopefully i have the second saucer here she said that we're both there yeah it is the second saucer is underneath so i thought that was a lovely thing i liked it very much i paid three pounds 
Let me have a quick look and see if it's worth anything. Someone has one listed not in a box. Theirs has a milk jug and mugs and a sugar bowl, so it's slightly different. Oh, there's my one. Someone's got the other one listed at $24.99. Let's have a look at solds. Hang on. No exact matches, but there is one. Somebody, some, one sold at £1.20 on bids. I'd be gutted if that was mine. I think I should safely be able to list it at $24.99. Looking at solds, so general solds for bits and pieces of it. I think I should safely be able to list that at $24.99. I think it's lovely. My camera just switched off and I'm a bit worried now about how much I might not have recorded. Thank you for joining me. I'll be back soon. Take care. Bye for now.